السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ السلاۃ والسلام علیکہ یا رسول اللہ و علیہ و صحبہ اجمعین الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستقفر و نقمن به و نتوکل و علیک اسٹارٹ ود نیم آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی دا موسٹ موسف ویسنٹ پلیس اینڈ بلیسنگس ٹو پروفٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم and his companions and his household so now i have uh, thought to start a series virtues of dhul hijja so this will be uh, insha allah for 10 days and uh, each day will be uploading an episode i know i am 3 days behind so but in i live in the subcontinent so i am just 2 days behind but all the uh, the videos have been made and it's just to be uploaded so The first episode is about the sacred month. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to the virtue of Dhul Hijjah. So first just some historical context on what the sacred month are and uh, what they even mean. Uh, a lot of times if you ask people what uh, the sacred months are they would immediately uh, think Ramadan because this is the kind of thinking of specifically type of sanctity. Uh, but the sacred months have different context and certainly ramadan is the holiest month and the most mercious month but the sacred month means something and it is important for us to try to memorize the islamic calendar and to know the different months that we are in because each month uh, has its own set of virtues and each month has its own set of rules and in many cases uh, it's own set of practice for example the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if uh, i was to ask you what month is fasting the most um, virtuous outside of ramadan most people would think shaban or shawwal because they are thinking about the six days of shawwal but the prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the most beneficial month of fasting or the most beloved month of fasting is muharram after ramadan the month of allah muharram so it's important to try to know this months and to know where they are in the calendar and to know uh, in the calendar and to know to know what they represent now the sacred months all have a specific meaning to them a uh, special meaning to them the names typically have to deal with the seasons of warfare and so you will find that these months uh, often refer to the practice or the things that we are taking place at the time So there are four sacred months these were the months where fighting was prohibited in which all forms of battle was prohibited even in the pre-islamic arabs uh, so you look at the names dhul qaida which means the month to sit uh, means that you sit back you do not fight you do not engage in any type of warfare dhul hijja is the month in which hajj is uh, there uh, used to be a reiteration of hajj in the islamic days there is muharram which means forbidden it is the beginning of the year so it is forbidden and then there is a month of Rab- rajab which is the only month it's not in succession that comes uh, that does not come in succession and rajab means to remove and refrain so you would remove your weapons and refrain from fighting somewhere in the middle of the year now what the arabs would do in these months they would shift them around before islam so they could structure the year around their fighting so if they need to change a month so they would engage in battle they would do so and uh, the separation of rajab also has a beautiful meaning to it imam al shafi radiyallahu anhu may allah be pleased with him said this is like umar ibn abdul aziz uh, to the uh, may allah be pleased with them to the rest of the khulafa they were considered khulafa al rashidin the righteous of khalifas and uh, umar ibn abdul abdul aziz though he did not live immediately after ali or succeed immediately after ali uh, radiyallahu an Uh, that he has included amongst them uh, even though he is separated from them so you got three months in succession dhul qaida dhul hijja muharram and then rajab which is separated and all these months contains very special rules and special things now because the arabs played with these months they put them in order or they messed up with the order in the order to give themselves time to fight or to give themselves flexibility in certain times of the year allah subhanahu wa taala set them put and put them special rules with them again the benefit of the order for us is that if you think about the way that allah subhanahu wa taala bunches this month up 
you know you finish ramadan and then after ramadan you got 6 days in which you fast in shawal and then immediately coming after that you end up with dhul qaida and then dhul in dhul qaida you immediately have the sacred month to prepare yourself for hajj for dhul hijja for the month of hajj in which there are virtues in the first 10 days in dhul hijja there the there is the day of arafa and so much you're still in the spirit uh, you're still on spiritual high after ramadan and you are able to capitalize on that with the 6 days of shawal and then going into dhul hijja you are able to capitalize on the best 10 days of the year and then right after dhul hijja you have muharram which is the best month to fast outside ramadan so you can increase your fasting and so the way these months are bunched up you go out of islamic year or uh, you finish the islamic year strong and then you are able to start the islamic year strong and you are able to maintain the spiritual high so what happens in this month or what to be taken into consideration at a practical level outside of specified virtues of this month and outside of the uh, you know outside of the war and battle and things that are not applicable to us today well for one good deeds are more acceptable or more beneficial or blessed in this so allah multiplies the reward of good deeds in this month and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also becomes so it's the sacred month or these are the sacred months the sins are also amplified or they are uh, worsen in these days and this is according to a saying of uh, al hafiz ibn hajar may allah be pleased with him uh, he said that be careful of the acts of dif- ob- disobedience because verily they forbid forgiveness in the season of mercy just like if you commit a sin it's bad enough but if you commit a sin in prayer it makes it worse when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a season of mercy a season of forgiveness then you need to capitalize on that and make sure that you don't do anything that uh, deprive you of the blessings of those rewards in those months finally when it comes to these sacred months dhul hijja is most the sacred of the sacred months as a month as a whole and we know that because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith uh, narrated by abu bakr as siddiq may allah be pleased with him he said that no Uh, doubt your blood your property your honor are more sacred to one another as the sanctity of this day of yours as a sacred month as uh, this month of of yours a sacred as this place of yours which is makka so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying the most sacred day and in the most sacred month which is dhul hijja and the most sacred place which is masjid al haram which is a sanctified place So it's important to memorize the Islamic calendar. I tell people, by the way, uh, there's a great nasheed that you can memorize the Islamic months. Uh, all the kids could uh, sing it all the time where uh, they actually go through them. And uh, uh, it's important for us to know where we are, to know specific good deeds for that month. And to amp- also amplify our good deeds in these months and be extra careful about our sins. in this month may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to achieve the benefit and mercy in this month and forgiveness in this month and allow us to abstain from sins throughout the entire year allah ameen jazakallahu khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh